Hardy is still moving through enemy territory and having to camp in the brush on the side of the road or in the brush in order to avoid being spied upon while the sleepers slept. Skeletons stand on guard through the night on high alert the entire time and nothing ever comes about. Party finally finds the plantation they have been moving towards and park their carriage in a hidden corpse of trees and bushes with the entire party disembarking. Skeletons immediately engage full search and destroy mode like calcium T-800s and begin to infiltrate the plantation. Omen is doing her best to stick close to Kyla, who is moving after her skeletons. What? Where are you guys going, damn it? Kyla yells out into their minds, and she's booking it across the trees, trying to keep track of her creations. Agile and Rowdy park themselves at the end of the tree line, while Auspicious clambers up another tree to get a sight line on the plantation, and sending back what he sees to the party. The plantation is a huge agricultural complex, that is more like a small town, with roving minders filtering through the field of crops with their whips and bugles to alert the mercenaries hard to take care of any other problems they can't. In the middle of this complex is the main mansion where the master lives with his family and the house slaves. Just in front of them is a ditch road that connects to the main road the party pulled off from and about 500 yards away from the tree line filled with a small group of minders on the lunch break. The skeletons bicker between each other while Kyla is craning her neck to try and see if she can spot her mother. She can't. She's too far away, but she's super anxious about the whole thing. First is with Agile and Rowdy, as always, just happy to be involved. The minders begin to end their lunch break and make their way back down the road towards the main plantation area, and Drunk Skeleton decides now is the time to make his move. His move is yakety saxon across the road to a small bend where he's hidden out of sight. Kyla sees this and runs after him, kicking up dirt trails and her bag bouncing off her thigh. Omen curses quietly and runs after her, but the noise has alerted the minders, who turn around just in time to see Omen in the middle of the road. All they see is a woman in men's clothes that looks like a merc, and they greet her. She greets them back, looks over to Drunk, who has pulled Kyla to his armoured chest and both of them are sweating their respective fluids of water and calcium. Omen begins to stutter and do her best to act nonchalant, asking them where locations at the plantation are. The men take interest in this, not in an aggressive way, and begin walking towards her as a grip. Drunk Skelton decides to pull the ripcord and begin to focus on his skull. Agile and Rowdy take the opportunity to dart behind the grip and a route run across the road to a nearby field, parting the wheat in them like velociraptors in tall grass. The skeletons run into slaves in the field, who poke her face and do their best to ignore the skeletons. Meanwhile on the road, Drunk Skeleton gets a critical on his drunk aura and the group of minders gets slammed like a case of white claw on a truck tailgate. Kyla reaches out and grabs Omen's shirt sleeve, yanking her towards the blind. The men see Omen magically disappear and begin to loudly ask where the pretty lady with freckles went. The minders are now wandering around the road, drunkenly yelling, Pretty lady! and trying to find Omen. Auspicious Skeleton has a bit of a snort, as first runs out after Rowdy and plies into the field behind them. On a hill some distance away, a mercenary on a horse is noticing some pretty weird shit, but can't be arsed to really do anything about it, shouldering his matchlock rifle, and instead going back to his saucy romance novel. Drunk, Omen and Kyla sneak up off the road and into an orchard of cherry trees, using stacks of baskets and other such things as cover as the rest of the skeletons look for her mother. Auspicious being content with staying in the tree and being lookout, out. They have to search the fields one by one and god damn it there's a lot of fucking fields in this place. They manage to keep rolling good sneaky boy rolls and keep out of the way of roaming patrols. Drunk and party staying hidden and relaying information between all the party members. Kyla sends them all an image she remembers of her mother. This soft face one woman. She has two horns that come together and spiral together near the top of her forehead and has a motherly face, and lacks any real hard features. The skeletons squirrel this way and continue their search. Agile and First, however, spot the merc with a rifle. Agile sees a boom boom bang bang stick. First sees something shiny that must be expensive, the boom boom bang stick. Both of them go off course in the wheat and begin making their way towards him, just as Rowdy finds Kyla's mother, Harla. Harla has lost her soft features, as well as her horns, which have been broken off below the point and barely woven together still. She has gained muscles, scars and rough hands, 
as well as a roughened face that seems devoid of her once motherly look. Rowdy treats her like a fucking velociraptor, and he's Chris Pratt, trying to corral the woman towards Kyla, and drunks hide. Agile notices, curses, and turns round to help him, while First is still sneak dodging across the wheat field. Rowdy tries to grab her hand, but is instead flipped around onto his back with a rattle of bones, and Harley begins to run. Kyla sent us, she's here! He manages to croak out, and both he and Agile manage to get her on their side. Agile pops smoke as soon as Harla turns friendly, and double times it to beat first. Agile notices that first is way ahead of him, and begins sprinting through the crop, flying by first and bursting out of the wheat a few yards from where the merc and horseback. It spooks the fuck out of the horse, who tosses the rider, cries out in outrage and chases after Agile. Over with Kyla, Rowdy is leading Harla out of the wheat and towards the cherry trees, where her daughter is making stealth checks along the way because minders have come close. A few times Rowdy has had the Assassin's Creed a minder or two because they got too close, pulling them into the wheat and stabbing them until the fruit punch stops pumping. Kyla has almost ran out of cover twice, so Drunk tells Omen to restrain Kyla while he goes out to link up with Rowdy. Omen ties Kyla to a cherry tree with her sword belt. Kyla is furious and calling Omen every name in the book while Omen looks proud of her handiwork. Drunk is linked up with Rowdy, just inside the wheat, and while walking out a few steps ahead, sees Kyla tied to a fucking tree. Omen gives Drunk a thumbs up, and Drunk furiously motions to untie Kyla. Harla comes out of the wheat, just in time to see her precious little girl on the back of Omen trying to choke her with a headlock. Harla says Kyla's name, and she looks over to see her mother for the first time in years. Mama? Kyla says, and hops off of Omen and runs over. The two of them embracing each other, and Kyla holds her mother's face, tracing the scars and such while the two whisper to each other. Omen has a nice cry about the whole thing, while Rowdy and Drunk breathe a sigh of relief. The moment is ruined when a bullet whizzes overhead. While the rest of the good boy skeletons were doing good boy things, Agile and First instead have their minds on stealing shit because it's cool and shiny. Agile had successfully unhorsed the mercenary by spooking his horse, and had mounted him to begin stabbing down at his exposed body parts. First is running at full speed to try and stake her claim on the fancy matchlock rifle. Agile has subdued the mercenary, he's laying confused in a pull of his own heart juices, and has pulled the matchlock away from his body. Heart juices, stop it. First tackles Agile with a snarl, and the two of them begin grappling each other for the rifle. After a few rounds of combat, Agile rips the rifle out of First's hands and holds it over his head in a victorious jerk. Yeah, I was just waiting that. <laughs> Fucking sand people. He also depresses the firing lever. The rifle spits out a round the size of a testicle with a raucous boom and a huge plume of smoke. The same bullet that whizzes passes the necromancer Kyla and her newfound mother. Skeletons snap their skulls to watch the round fly towards the main compound of the plantation. Inside the mansion of the plantation, the plantation owner and his wife are opening meal and enjoying their day together. The tea was just brought in, fresh cookies lay on plates, and the two chuckle at each other while reading missives from the Arderman's government requesting higher and higher yields. What do they expect us to do? Start planting the slaves? The plantation owner goffs picking up his teacup and looking over at his wife. His wife goes to say something, holding her own teacup on her lap, but the reply never comes. A fucking lead ball crashes through their lead-paned windows and connects with the skull of his wife. Her body doesn't even move as the round, now slower, pulverises her head and turns the walls and furniture behind her into a three-dimensional Pollock painting. Her bottom jaw hangs loosely as the body slumps back slightly against the fine couch she's sitting on the tongue lolling out the side of her ruined mouth, and a few spurts of blood fly out into the air and rain down into her pristine teacup, spattering the blue and white porcelain with droplets of crimson. The plantation owner stares in confusion and shock as a maid walks in and screams when she spots the cascade of brains. Back down with Agile on first. First takes one look at Agile and begins sprinting back to the carriage. The whole plantation goes into alert, and people are spilling out of buildings. Time to go, screams Auspicious, who hurdles down from his tree with a rattle of bones and armour. Drunk, Rowdy, Omen, Harla and Kyla 
begin a mad dash for the tree line where the carriage is, leaping and hurtling over anything in their path. Agile shrugs and begins to loot the body of the still alive but dying Mark, looking for more ammunition and powder. Rowdy sees this and veers off, while Agile begins his own run to the carriage. Rowdy feels around the man, who is coughing and asking for help, and finds a matchlock pistol and more ammunition for both the weapons. Rowdy Skelton pats the man's forehead and then goes back to running towards the carriage. The entire party is running to the carriage, while the plantation erupts in a pandemonium, auspicious readying the horses, and first diving into the safety of the main carriage compartment. Drunk Skelton clambers inside the carriage as well, and player has missed his flight. Windows XP shut down. Wav. The powers down, clattering down into a seat while first looks at him in confusion. All the living souls climb into the carriage as well, while Rowdy and Agile hop on top. Carriage lurches back onto the roadway at full speed. An hour passes, and those in the outside of the carriage are on full paranoia mode, while those in the inside are not. Kyla is tapping drunk on the skull. Hey, wake up! What's with you? She murmurs, and keeps tapping a skull with a little thunk 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 on the empty cranium. Omen is fluffing up first and picking dried blood out of her fur and looking over at Harla. Harla is staring at her daughter, her face confused and now attentive. So this is what you've been doing? Raising the dead and raiding plantations looking for me? She says, somewhat dismayed, but also proud. After Artemans raided our village and took you away, I've been looking for you. I, I thought it would be easier with some help, Kyla says softly, and walks over to hug her mother once again in the cramped little carriage. I've missed you so much. And I needed heroes to come save you. No one ever answered me or volunteered, so I finally decided to raise up some actual heroes who may be able to do such a deed. Kyla whispers into your mother's neck, and Harla strokes her daughter's dirty and road-weary hair. Harla looks over at Drunk Skelton, his jaw agape and head bouncing off the seat. Oh yes, quite the bunch of hard liners you managed to pick up, she says with a laugh, and Kyla laughs back sheepishly. Owen has tears in her eyes at the little exchange, while First is just fuming over the loss of the rifle still. Auspicious Skelton keeps his eyes ahead and sees very little, while the two on top are too enthralled with their new weapons to really pay any attention to anything else. Auspicious then picks up on a hoof clap, not of his own beasts, something in the distance behind them. Hey, idiots, what's that sound? He says via necroscype, and the two skeletons on top look around behind the carriage, and squint their eye sockets. Not just one horse. No, many horses are chasing after them. Uh, well, I don't think they're friends, says Rowdy, and Agile eagerly shoulders his rifle. Rowdy begins to try and climb down the side of the speeding carriage, bouncing and rolling with the sway of the wheels, and opens the carriage door slightly to tell those inside what they see. Then there's a distant boom, and the top part of the door disappears in a splinter of wood. Rowdy leans back on the door, and sees that a lot of the horse's men are bearing matchlocks of their own, and are now upon them. Crud, he growls, as Agile clambers over the top of the carriage to get a better shot and levels his matchlock. The weapon is new, so it takes him a few seconds to figure out how to properly fire it. Aha! he shouts, and depresses the firing lever. It's not cocked. For fuck's sake! he screams over the wind as a bullet whizzes past his left hip, and he cocks the action on his matchlock, the end of the firing cord glowing brightly as the wind passes over it. A few of the horsemen with long spears ride up next to the rear of the carriage and attempt to break the wheels, one stabbing too far and getting his spear caught in the spokes. The torque of the wheel in the wood shaft breaks the man's arm as he screams, falling from his horse and rolling on the ground with a deft crack of bones breaking. The others fare a little better, Riding ahead a little farther and jabbing his own spear at the front tire, he leans too far forward and falls off, the rear wheel crushing him and jolting the carriage up and down harshly. Whoa! Rowdy shouts as he loses his grip in the carriage and is now holding on to the doors as it swings out, presenting him out like a fresh tart behind a baker's window. Another bullet hits the door, narrowly missing Rowdy. Agile, however, has acquired a target and looks down the sights of his rifle. Get fucked, you cunt, he roars and depresses the lever. There's a slight pause, but the rifle belches out its charge 
and a great plume of smoke cascades down the ranks of the horsemen like a fog screen. The bullet flies a little low and slams into the chest of a horse, who dies instantly and crashes down into its face as its legs give way. The rider meeting the same fate as his head slams into the stones below, scattering teeth and brain across the road like a macabre confetti popper. Fucking awesome! Agile yells excitedly, and pulls out the ramrod to reload. A horseman with a sword begins to charge at Rowdy, swinging from his door, and he remembers his own pistol. With flair tantamount for a highwayman, Rowdy whips out his pistol, cocks it one-handed as the door swings back towards the carriage, and slams around home in the man's chest. The man has something akin to a ruined hole where his lungs used to be, as he stares down in shock as he starts to lean back. He leans too far back and catches a pop from the rump of his horse and bounces off into the road below, his limbs flailing with the momentum. His horse kind of just slows down and puffs air out of its nose in a, well, my job's done here, later, fashion. Ruddy goffs and looks at his pistol, grabbing onto the carriage, shutting the door and climbing back on top to reload. Agile has now reloaded and cocks his firing hammer, spotting one of the mounted shitters and taking aim. The man sees the skeleton and goes, ah, in terror, his hands moving up to pull his reins. But it's too late, and another plume of smoke cascades into the chasing horseman, and the boom rumbles through the trees. The man is dead in the saddle and slumps forward into the neck of his horse, who also veers off away and slows down to a canter, peeling away from the main grip. Rowdy has reloaded as well and fires his pistol, catching a swordman in the shoulder He curses and veers his mount away and slows down, coming off the chase. Auspicious has had enough of this shit and pulls out his little fox familiar, setting him down in the seat. Hold these little did, he shouts, and shoves the reins into the little bush fox's mouth, who gives off an alarmed noise before bracing his paws in the seat and his citron eyes staring wide in panic. Auspicious clambers over the edge of the carriage and stumps down on top of the carriage, swinging down with his torch and smashing another spearman off his horse, the man giving a wailing cry before smashing into a tree on the side of the road wetly. The carriage is swerving a little more now, as the little fox familiar is doing his best to steer with his mouth. Kyla pokes her head out the window of the carriage to see what's going on. A bullet from a pistol goes whizzing past, and she quickly pulls her head back inside. Agile and Rowdy are both reloading, as Auspicious walks up behind them. Who the fuck is driving? yells Agile pumping his ramrod up and down in his barrel to seat the heavy lead round into the wad and powder, his skull peppered with powder burns. Little Foxman has it under control, Auspicious yells back cheerily and holds up his torch. Auspicious asks Kyla to give him a pump of juice as he grips his torch with both hands and he feels the energy burst into him with an almost frantic speed. There's a barely visible shock wave as Auspicious launches a fear aura and it's highly effective on the low morale of the horsemen chasing them. Many pull away except for one man, one man who still has a loaded firearm. The horseman grimaces, with sweat dripping down his face, his bright green eyes eyeing the carriage. He has seen the little horned girl poke her head out, and he thinks he knows where she's sitting. He releases the reins, his knees grip his saddle tight, and he crisply cocks the hammer of his matchlock carbine. Rowdy lifts his pistol and snapshots, and his pistol round crashes into the man's thigh with a cascade of red blood that splatters down the side of the man's horse. He breathes in deep, his rifle steady. Agile roars out a challenge in his Australian accent and fires, the round catching the horseman in the middle of the chest. The horseman gasps as the round penetrates and shatters some of his ribs, bursting apart his lung and smashing out his back with the sun glittering off the blood and meat that are torn away. He manages to keep his rifle sight up to his eye. Time slowing down, the horseman who is already dead, he grits his bloody teeth and fires. The gush of smoke washes over him as he rides through the cloud and sees that his bullet has struck home in the carriage and he smiles his last smile as blood spills down his chin and onto his ruined chest. Rowdy has reloaded quickly and fires once more. The round impacts just under his clavicle more of his body being torn away by the brutal force of such a heavy bullet, and he begins to fall back. His knees have locked onto his saddle, and his horse begins to slow its gait, its rider's cooling body lolling and bouncing on top of it. The three skeletons grimly watch the man as they speed away, 
A stubborn one, that one, Rowdy says. A right mad cunt, affirms Agile, and he finishes reloading his rifle. Auspicious turns on his heel and strides back towards the front of the carriage, taking up the reins from his very beleaguered fox familiar. Unknown to them, the inside of the carriage is a messy blood affair. The round had penetrated all the way through the carriage, slowing enough that once it crashed through the last barrier and entered the passenger space, it carried with it a massive wooden spalling, filling the carriage with splinters of all sizes that assailed all those inside it. Omen was less lucky, the round wobbling in its fight and impacting right at her collarbone. It was so slow at this point, it just smashed the bone to ribbons and followed her shoulder curve, carving a bloody swath through her shoulder muscle and lodging itself into the wood behind her ear. Kyla, Harla, Omen and First are also shard in very sharp splinters that peppered their flesh, causing superficial bleeding all over their exposed body parts. Thankfully no one is blinded, and they sit in shock. Kyla looks at her mother, blood spilling down her eyes from splinters in her face, as Harla clucks her teeth and pulls out a solid splinter from her neck, a little trail of blood spilling down her chest. Drunk skeleton is still powdered down, and does nothing, his bony head shaking with the carriage. Rowdy climbs back down as Agile takes up sentry duty on top, and opens the carriage door to the carnage inside. Oh holy fuck! He yells and clambers inside to help. It takes some time and a little bit of necromantic magic, but they manage to stop Omen's bleeding and mend most of the bone and flesh. The wound is going to be heavily scarred and her arm may have a permanent hitch, but she's not going to die. Rowdy also helps pick first free of splinters, while Harla and Kyla help each other. You do know how to keep an exciting life, don't you? Harla says, laughing, brushing her daughter's bloody hair back and wiping away at the blood. Kyla reaches up and plucked a splinter from her mother's hair. You know me, Mum. Always had a nose for it. Harla chuckled motherly and placed her forehead on Kyla's and the two sat there like that for a few moments. Quiet except for the ragged breaths of sleeping Omen and First, grumbling at Rowdy, who insists on checking her ears for more wounds. Kyla fills Harla in on their adventures so far and Harla tells Kyla what happened after she was taken to the slave markets. Harla had been traded around multiple times before finally coming to the permanent location at the plantation. She was found. It was a hard life. Whips were abundant and extra food was given to those who tattled on other slaves. Harla had to do what she needed to survive and she wasn't proud of it. The party continues travelling for the next few days, anxious and quiet, as the skeletons are riding hard to the last location of the refugee camp. They pass the remains of the slave cart interaction some of the wagons being so damaged they were left behind, and even spied the greasy spot where the old paladin had died, his remains gone. The skeletons share a buzzing conversation between themselves via Necroskype about this, and come up with many theories on where the remains had gone, but nothing concrete. Evidence of the siege column are also present. Trash, campsites, and dead slaves chucked aside into the ditch are scattered here and there between the miles of road. The horses are rested and watered when needed, and left to graze and sleep while the party sleeps as well. The living members anyway. The skeletons lurk in the dark like unmoving sentries, their guns and weaponry gripping tightly as they stare into the darkness and gloom. Finally they come across the location of the refugee camp, and turn the carriage onto the path and come out onto the great open field. The little command structure is still there, and thankfully no bodies anywhere to be seen. Well, that's not entirely true. The dead captain from before is still there, rotting and stinking. (laughs) The skeletons dismount with Kyla and Omen, Harla sneezing inside, and they walk towards the command structure. Pinned to the table is Chiron's hunting knife with a slip of paper underneath it, with hastily scrawled lettering on it. Taliab. Kyla perks up to the name and turns to her skeletons. That's a very large port city further down the road, probably where that siege force is heading. The skeletons agree and Rowdy pulls Chiron's hunting knife from the table, slipping it inside his belt. The party remounts and takes off again, going as hard as they dare and keep a watchful eye on the horses. Down and down the road they go, and the time passes slowly for them, as they all wonder about Millie, Chiron and the cows, and the refugees. The cows? Where's the cows? I've missed the cows I've so missed much. The cows. I completely forgot about them. Oh. Ah. Trees give way to a large open grassland and the carriage slow down as Auspicious looks across the low grasslands and spots another town in the distance. 
some hours away. The party decide to go towards the town, as the carriage can doubtfully handle the off-road travel needed to go around it. An auspicious clacks his teeth together, horse snickers, and sets off again. How about these horses, eh? Roll higher than most fucking rogues. Rowdy clambers on top of the carriage with Agile, who all move towards the front, and Drunk Skeleton lurches awake. Windows start up .wav. Drunk Skeleton pops awake. His skull moves from side to side, taking in the scene. The hell happened to you lot? Kyla glares at him. What happened to you? I was updating. Drunk cries back, and begins to administer brew to all those in front of him. Harley takes a bit of doing, getting the mug back, and has to almost get Kyla in a headlock to get the tankard away. Fucking Onais, Drunk murmurs, before crouching in front of Omen and coaxing some of the liquid into her mouth. She coughs a bit, but manages to get some in here, and she improves slowly. The skeletons outside watch the buildings as they get closer, and they are eerily silent. No windows come open with people watching, doors sway in the wind, and not a sound of anvil nor stall echo on the breeze as the carriage closes the distance. The skeletons spot impact marks on the sides of buildings and on the roads, as if a great stone had been dropped or launched from some machine. It's clear as they near. It's not marks from stones, but great hammers, and there are bits of people inside these craters. Auspicious slows the horses, giving the reins a little pull. The door knockers. Indeed, in the craters are the remains of soldiers, pinned to the walls or pummeled into the ground like fresh nails. Squeaking, the wheels come to a slow halt in the middle of the road, before a great square in the centre of the town, in which the road rotates like a roundabout and the skeletons are looking up at a figure outlined in the sky. Drunk Skeleton opens the door to get out first, but stops, also seeing the figure. The figure is tied to two maypoles via rope, the ribbons of which flow eerily in the wind across the broken and bloody man, his arms and legs tied out in an X. The skeletons recognise the man. Kyla chastises Drunk and dunks under his arm, stepping down onto the road. She looks at Drunk, then follows his gaze, and her face hardens. The man tied to the maypole is the guard captain from the refugee camp, the one who had watched his volunteer guards get bullied by the skeletons and laughed behind a map with Kyla. He has been blood-eagled, flayed from the back and his lungs nailed to his shoulders so they wouldn't fall off. It was a very messy and slow death, and the flies hung around him like a great cloud. Harla and Omen step out, and Omen immediately is taken aback by the sight, running behind the carriage to empty her stomach. The town is so very quiet, so the wet splash is heard by all. Kyla walks forward and takes out her belt knife, cutting at the leg ropes. The skeletons move in to help her, Rowdy and Agile shimmering up the poles to cut the arm ropes away. He is carefully lowered down by the skeletons, the ropes whispering across their bones, and the guard captain finally comes to the arrest on the ground. A shallow grave is dug for him by Omen, Kyla and Agile. First guards the carriage, her hackles raised. Drunk begins investigating the battle scene, while Rowdy lurks off across town to obtain information as well. Drunk traces the fight to a small skirmish by the beginning of the road, where the soldiers have been pounded into the roads and walls of the buildings. His boot thumps on the ground as he walks slowly, tracing the delaying actions of soldiers and the splatters of blood here and there, shattered pieces of armour, broken spear tips and wood splinters. After thorough investigation... Drunk comes to the conclusion that the soldiers of the town and the volunteer refugee guard fought a cascading delaying action, killing and dying to allow the refugees to flee and gain ground, spending each body to purchase minutes. Drunk skeleton kneels down and places his skeletal fingers on a collection of boot scuffs and an impact mark where an old pool of blood lay. Where are the bodies? He thinks, and looks up, scanning the square as the sound of shovels is heard in the distance and begins to run over to a building where something lay. Rowdy comes to a stop before a large mound, and his sockets flow over the mass of faces before him. Rowdy has found the dead. They are all piled together in a great open grave, stacked like logs. There are hundreds of bodies, most of them soldiers, but a large number of them unarmed, and civilians as well. Rowdy even recognises one of the other concubines that Agile had rescued, still gripping the broken shaft of spear in a death grip and a huge gash on top of her head as if she were felled by a great swing of a sharp blade. Rowdy can't smell it, 
but he senses the smell of death here is awful, his skeletal hands resting on the grip of his pistol. He spends some time scanning for familiar faces, seeing a few here and there. One of the little boys that had milked auspicious cows is there as well, the brave lad, but no others of note. Rowdy turns on his heel, the soul digging into the ground as he strides back towards town. He spies drunk running and runs after him, and both comes to a stop before a great, grey, charger. The two skeletons swarm over the horse, and yes, it is indeed the stolen horse Karen was riding when they sent her off. The horse has been speared many times, and slashed her ribbons. Its hooves are covered in flesh, bits of hair, and blood, and its saddle is battered and beaten. The charger died of battle wounds, fighting valiantly, but where is the rider? Rowdy tells Drunk about his findings, and that he didn't see Kyron there, and the two nod gravely at each other. They return to the main grip just as they were finishing the grave, and Auspicious sets a grave marker while Agile stacks some broken bricks on top to keep away animals. Kyla is crying. Unbeknownst to the skeletons, the guard captain had been something akin to a friend, both of them fighting at the first town that fell, and watching out for each other as they fled with the rest of the refugees. He made sure she had food and water, gave her hope that the skeletons would come, made her laugh and cheered her up when all got so terrible. He was brave and probably fought till they bore him down and hung him up there like a trophy. I, I'm so sorry, Eric, I'm so sorry, she whispers as tears flow down her dirty cheeks. Harla rests her hand on her daughter's shoulder and they both stare down at the grave. Rowdy and Drunk give their report and Kyla nods wiping her eyes with her palms. Taliab. On we go to Taliab. They'll need us there. The skeletons agree, and the party re-embark the carriage. The carriage passes the great grave mound, and Omen almost barfs in the carriage again from the smell. The smell, however, is known to first Kyla and Harla, as they are curiously unaffected. The horses are steeled by Auspicious, and they pass by grimly. Rattling and creaking, the party makes their way to the city of Taliab, and see little else as they travel through the day and through the night, arriving around 2am to see the great siege playing out before them. Taliab is a gigantic walled city, and around it are ringed siege camps, their torches lit and dancing in the distance like a million fireflies. The harbour can also be seen, and there are flashes of what can only be assumed cannons as ships fire upon the shore. From the shore are also flashes, or balls of lights flung into the distance. Along the top of the walls are torches as well, and the scenes would be beautiful if it wasn't for the true nature of it. The carriage rolls down the road and goes off-road into a corpse of trees, and the skeletons make quick work camouflaging the carriage with brush, bush, and foliage of all kinds. The skeletons line up before Kyla, their skulls shining in the moonlight. What's the order, boss? 